Welcome to the Healing Collective Podcast, where we explore the paradox of healing. And we broadcast all of the healing codes to support a world of more heart-centered humans. What's going on over there? Visitors in my system today. Ooh. Who am I talking to? We'll see. Mm. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I asked to record because I got all kinds of stuff going on. I got good news and bad news. Good news is a uh, hot tub got delivered today and we're going to Hawaii on Saturday. Bad That's news wild. is, <laughs> and the bad news is I've lost my damn mind and like all of my tracking systems and structures and strategies are sort of like nowhere to be found and it's all feeling pretty new (laughs) i know you're here for it wow your eyes are different Like your eyes look purple. Mm. Do you have anything you want to say? Not yet. Okay. Well, maybe I'll catch everybody else up. So... I think, but my higher self can sometimes look a lot like my trauma coping strategies, my like adaptive child kind of stuff, which will be like staying calm, not getting triggered. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm truly holding space and not triggered. And sometimes it just looks like that because I'm kind of frozen and in a trauma response. And, um, yeah, something about this new relationship I'm in, none of that's very accessible. I'm um, just kind of like really young and really scared and like messy and not together, not very conscious. And I don't really feel like I have that much control over it. And that all feels pretty scary. <laughs> think I'm driving my boyfriend crazy. Um, And it's really interesting to not, I don't know, pathologize all my things and not, and just kind of be triggered and just be that and not, and just act from that place without trying to, I don't know, figure figure it all out and do it all really consciously or do it all in this really controlled way. So when I say I've lost my damn mind, that's what I mean. Um, I think the last several relationships I've been in, I moved and healed and shifted a lot of stuff and changed a lot. And now I'm just getting like younger and younger. And I feel like a little girl. I just feel like I'm seven. Like, scared that my dad that I'm bothering him and that I'm annoying and give an example what's going on so uh so the guy I'm dating is pretty he's like the most responsive he like I don't want to hear that about him I don't believe you I would just want to know how what he does like that. what an example of that where I get triggered yes yeah so like Um, he knows that I worry when I don't like hear from him or I don't know what he's doing or if he's busy and I'm texting him and I don't realize that he's busy. So like this week he went to six flags with his friends. So he called me to be like, listen, I'm not going to be very around. Like I'm, you know, we're going on water slides and I'm not going to be very communicative today. So he was like calling to give me a heads up about it. And my first thought was like, who's he going with? And why isn't he telling me who he's going with? And I just went to like, he's going with 
other women. He's going with like, and you're assuming that's paranoia and not guidance. Why don't you trust that? Um, because usually later he tells me and it's not what I thought it was. Well, like how I do you could, know he's feels, telling you the truth when he tells you? I suppose it's only as good as his word. I'm just saying, let's just play the game just for this exploration of mm -hmm. you believed yourself as much as you're believing whatever he's saying to you. I mean, yeah, all, all I have is what he's telling me. What um, is your body telling you? My body is telling me that uh, he's hiding stuff from me without realizing that he's hiding stuff from me. Yes. Yeah. Like he doesn't think he is. In fact, he thinks he's not. But and he might even be so he might even be deluding himself. Yeah. Your system is the most intelligent piece of technology ever created. And it is the way your higher self can speaks to you through you. I understand that you're new at understanding the signals and making sense of them. So that makes sense, mm -hmm. but do not override them mm -hmm. and do not defer to his interpretation of your experience. Yeah. It's like, I, I get like very circular thoughts of just like this person's not telling you things. This person's like withholding this person's like, um, hiding. I feel that it feels true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, but it doesn't really stop there, though. It goes into really specific stories. Right. Well, that's the part that is the... Um, okay, so when this, when this uh, original intuition occurred in your system, you said mm -hmm. seven, so let's assume it was seven. Mm -hmm. You were some messages or you went in your head and then started creating something to get out of the feeling and the feeling wasn't mirrored back. Right. So let's say, let's say an example, like I felt like my dad was lying about something. Well, that's I a could, real I thing. Couldn't, for me. I couldn't go to my dad and say, are you lying about this? Or if I did, he would gaslight me. Mm -hmm. I mean, that happened to me. My dad was in this relationship while I wasn't divorced from my mom. And I worked at the same company as my dad. And I would see him like get in the car and go he was doing places. that. He was doing that version of that your whole yeah. life. And mm -hmm. your nervous system was picking up. Something's not right. Something's not right. Yeah. But you know, this in somatics, mm -hmm. if it's not mirrored, you know, if, if there isn't anybody to say, yes, honey, I am. Mm -hmm. It can, all it can do is spin like a broken record. Cause that signal just keeps hitting and hitting and hitting. And it's so uncomfortable that then we have to create some kind of way to get away from the signal because the alarm won't stop going off. Mm -hmm. I also realize there's a lot of projections though, too. Like every week I pay Kathy <laughs> and she's like, Oh, this is just like your dad. And so like, I can feel that it's actually that I am in the past responding to stuff when I was a kid too. So how do you tease that out when you know that you're reactive in the past as well as whatever your system let's, let's just call it the matrix okay. the matrix is going to orchestrate the scenario mm -hmm. for the next layer of your awareness so the next layer of your awareness is is this incompletion from when you're seven so the mm -hmm. matrix or whatever you want to call it i'm just calling it that because it's easy for people it's gonna it's orchestrated the relationship of this person Mm -hmm. It's triggered you on purpose mm -hmm. because it wants you to now with your adult awareness, the integration of your light body and all these other tools that you have, you have this opportunity to see the fullness and the wholeness of the experience and to create a different timeline basically. And by creating a different timeline, you create a different future possibility you I don't also, feel a lot of access to my like higher self and my light body though. That's what I was telling you earlier. It's one, it's always there. 
yeah. to your pattern is that your light body has had and we, this is similar for both of us. Our light bodies got access very early to our systems. Mm-hmm. And it basically was like, I'm here to do some shit. Fuck these human things and these signals and all of that. I'm going to put you aside. And we, so I have my own version. You had to get literally things amputated from your body. Like all of these things is, I think, as a result of our light body saying, you know, fuck that timeline of Bethany that this body was created to live. I'm here to do this other thing. And just the way that human beings are having to learn like how to work along lines of race and are learning to politics, there's even the oneness is calling for light bodies and physical bodies to learn integration and interdependence like all of these levels of complexity are having to learn interdependence and your pattern has been to completely override this to the point that it's been going on for years and you don't even know i i bet it every single relationship you've had it's been present Mm -hmm. in some degree or another but it's actually just now that your nervous system is ready Mm -hmm to experience yourself. And I think that you have the capacity to hold those parts of you because what did your parents need to do that they weren't available for? If your seven-year-old is scared and overwhelmed because their parents are lying to them, Mm -hmm. your holy higher self, which is not the same as your light body, Mm -hmm. is, would be, would say to them like, you're right, honey. And it's not safe. And your daddy can't be honest with you because he won't be honest with himself. And you have to learn to trust the signals. Mm -hmm. And do you want us to show you what he's doing? Do you really want to know? Yeah. And that is the dance of, because what's below that and below that is innocence. And who you would have been had mm-hmm. these layers not been placed on top of your innocence. And your innocence is your greatest access to all of your power, mm-hmm. all of your light. Yeah. And something about how life is organized right now, like I have more access to that than ever. It's your ast- astrological transit. And it, like you weren't ever going to face this until you were about to turn 40 years old. Are you talking about Saturn cycles? Mm, I don't think that I know the mathematics of it uh-huh. enough to say that. I just know that the map, there's more destiny than there is choice. Mm-hmm. And your GPS is just orienting to these stops on your timeline of your life. Mm -hmm. And this is just the time. Yeah. It feels like it's not really the time for consciousness or tools or. Because that's what, this is the, this is, this is what I think is going to be your medicine and spaces. Once you integrate all of this, because you're going to start to see how all of that gets used to override Mm -hmm. this and mm-hmm. how good fucking people get at that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, and then they gaslight you that they're conscious. Well, I know you're still in the exploration of it, but I'm saying when you get on the other side of this and you've mm-hmm. integrated it, you're going to be able to tune in and see how much this is what people are. And in what, in a lot of ways, what we're calling you know, patriarchy, white supremacy culture, these things, it just is a systemized version of this. It's a, it's like in your nervous system, in some nervous systems, the, what is it? Right side, the right side of the brain Mm -hmm. overrode all of these other parts as its survival mechanism, Mm -hmm. but it allowed it to create a lot of shit. And then it had to create a whole reality of systems and choices and ways of being to keep holding that reality together. Because if it, if it stopped working, if it stopped moving, if it stopped, whatever, then 
it was the system would start to become aware. It would try to integrate. It would try to evolve. So it had to create something to keep the illusion going ultimately to, you know, prevent its own unravel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the same on like an individual journey. Like we have like our inner child (laughs) and all of its needs that most of, most of the time don't get met when we're kids. Then we have like, this is what Kathy tells me. Then we have our adaptive child, which are these like, like that's all my over-functioning and my working hard and my codependency. Like that's like how we show up to manage the needs. Those are the people running the entire reality is a bunch Mm -hmm. of like the the real pandemic is a bunch of adults who have not emotionally developed over that past that developmental Mm -hmm. stage and then are creating the reality and raising kids and no one has even a vision of what it would be like to fully express beyond that level of development and Mm -hmm. so we call it adults well and then you have your actual wise adult which i don't know if we would call that higher self or if it's more like light body but it's like the one who actually can hold presence for the other two (laughs) Mm -hmm. or whatever and so you know we have some access to that and we practice and we get these pieces of that and we learn stuff. But a lot of the functioning, especially in my relationships the last couple of years, have, has been this adaptive child that's like a teenager who's like trying to figure out how to help my parents pay bills and right. like and whatever. And she's really the other thing is that because she's so rewarded by the reality. Yeah. It it um, you know, even if we use conscious leadership, you become more committed to having those mm-hmm. rewards. Like it just, it gets so hard. Why would you choose to unravel yourself if you're getting rewarded that way? Mm-hmm. There's very few reasons to wake up if once that adapted, especially in the, in the way that we've constructed reality mm-hmm. and the more, you know, quote unquote, maybe privilege you have not to face that because you have you are able to create that reality, the Mm -hmm. less chance you're going to unwind it. That's why I'm really seeing how men like this. A new thing for me is really, really getting at a somatic level, the way that our society coordinates for their comfort. So Mm -hmm. as an example is like, um, like you very rarely, and this is maybe I'm stereotyping. So I'm going to just take responsibility for that. But very rarely as a man, when he leaves his wife or whatever, he's usually with another woman very quickly. Like it's not hard for them to find other women. And as women, we're very easy to like make excuses or say why that's okay. Very rarely are women jumping into like, and have it's, it's like the message is like, oh, she's been, she's been with somebody. Oh, and don't even have kids. Cause that's a whole, right. It's like, we've created a society that like as women, we're just kind of like, how can we comfort you? How can we make you, you know, how can we help you not face whatever you did in that past relationship to create the scenario that you would want to leave or cheat or X, Y, and Z. And let me show up and, and hold that, you know what I mean? Step into that for you. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying this obviously as someone who's done it a few times, um, but it's never really occurred to me until recently, like how much, like, that keeps men from fully waking up or taking responsibility and how many things, including like porn and just all of the um, stimulation that's available, Mm. you know, and then I think we could go down the line. Like, what is it for this identity? What is it for this identity? I mean, we've, we've clearly done a great job across identities, but this male comfort thing is really at the service for me right now. And, and so it shows up in this situation with you because let's say, I mean, I think tables are turned. A man feels that way with a woman over and over. He's going to, he's going to be like, what are you doing? <laughs> he's not going to go try to rationalize why he's feeling something, something, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. No, mm-hmm. we do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like, like I can see how a lot of the stuff that my adaptive child was working for, like what the threats that exist to her, which are like basically security around money or like certain stuff, like uh, has been loosening, changing, 
like I feel more supported in a lot of ways than I did before. And it doesn't like this gripping threat of like, you're not going to have any money and you're not going to be able to pay your bills. And and not only that, but we're going to have this like apocalyptic situation where you're going to have to like fight to survive. <laughs> like that was kind of running all the time. Every meeting I get into, I'm like, like I could feel that a little bit. And a lot of that has started to unwind. I think so three years of SE and just changing a lot of stuff. Um, having a lot of experiences where I felt like I could trust life. Like some of that started unwinding. All right. And your needs are met. My needs are met. Your financial needs are met. That is my, not, a, that is, can't be it's underscored. Huge. I think and we, my, we don't even know what that feels like in our nervous system. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm like, Oh, it's okay. And I started actually trusting, even if the jobs I'm doing, if I lost them, I just started trusting, like, I'm going to figure that out for the most part. Sometimes I'm still scared. We're going to be in some crazy po- post-apocalyptic thing with this Pluto return in the next couple of years, but mostly not. Um, and then a lot of my other adaptive stuff is like, a lot of it's the working to ha- meet other people's needs. And so, um, because that, that was what I got when I was a kid. I, I, I was hearing all about how we didn't have any money and we're negative in the checkbook. And I just started fucking working and trying to make money. And I have a lot of people in my life that I love to be able to help that way. I've been able to create a lot of abundance around that. And I've been, I, we've talked about it. Like it's felt really good to be able to be generous. Yeah, and it's important to say right here that um, I need to get water in a minute. I'm getting really hot. Um, it's important to say that the trauma is part of the evolution. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, like, like there's all these become, good parts of it, right? Who we become in the future and what we have access to and how our bodies evolve is mm-hmm. can be directly linked to the trauma that was created because nothing mm-hmm. is wasted ever, you know? So yeah. I just, it's it, like the conversation we had in the hot tub that day after, uh, like you, like you're oh having, God, <laughs> like, well, I don't know. which hot tub yeah. um, when we went to that spa place after after oh, um, spa. Uh-huh. we went to king spa and it was like yeah all the stuff that our trauma responses ha- also have the super high side and their superpowers too mm-hmm. that we wouldn't have had if we didn't go through the stuff that was hard we had a conversation like that um, well, i just when we talk about it even i want us to start to practice holding the complexity for people mm-hmm. because i think we need to model that mm-hmm. like that we can say like this you know, is a superpower for you and your generosity and all these things. And there's nothing wrong with that. And at the same time, it's a trauma response. (laughs) It's a trauma response. And it's point there's places in your life where you've actually like, I would argue maxed out your adrenal system Mm -hmm. and pushed your body past past. far past its limits yeah. in order to meet the needs of that 14 year old and ignore the needs of the eight, seven, six, five, yeah. four, three, two, one, because you don't even remember them. Yes. And somehow in this new relationship, um, what's happening is he's in a little bit of a bind. Like he had some abundance of money and that kind of stopped. And of course me, I'm over here like, I'll help. And he is like, no, he will not, he will not take my money. He will not. And he is like mm. about to go to like pretty extreme place to that. I know he doesn't really want to go to rather than taking money from me. Mm. And my therapist is like, yeah, he's reparenting you. Like he's doing what your parents should have done, which would be like, this is not your responsibility. I'm here. I'm a full grown adult person and I'm going to meet this need for myself. And it's not your responsibility. And it feels. Well, it's also, I think like, how do I say this? My experience of you is that love as an energy is something you can experience when you throw it. Mm whether it's money or if you're just, I want to kiss you all over your face or I want to mm-hmm. give you a bunch of food. Right. So when you do that, you get to feel what the energy of love feels like, which is an important for you to know what that is, mm-hmm. but you don't know yourself as love. You aren't love without, you don't yet know like With the I, doing. I am that all the time. 
So when someone takes away the mm-hmm. way that you, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's like someone taking sex away from me, which is what's happened. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's like, oh, uh, uh, mm-hmm. and then I have to be with myself. Mm-hmm. And then when I'm with myself, I have to feel my signals. And then when I mm-hmm. feel my signals, I also have to feel the ways that I don't feel loved and I'm scared I'm going to lose it because I know I, I'm controlling love through this. Mm-hmm thing that I choose. You know what I mean? And when I can't Mm -hmm. control how I get it or how often or whatever, and those things are gone, then your system is going to freak out because we need love. Like love is the vibration that it's designed to hold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's like all that over-functioning that my, as my, as Kathy would call my adaptive child learned. Uh, yeah. He's like, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> and so then, and it's like in other, other ways too, like even the seriousness and the intensity of like holding all this responsibility, like he's a goof, makes me laugh. He talks into my foot like it's a phone. Like that's what I also wanted from my dad, just like mm-hmm. him to sit next with me and play with me. And like, so there's all this stuff that actually is in service of me being, <laughs> being younger not doing all the overfunctioning, and what's underneath that is just all the terror that I felt when I was little. So it's just all very here now. And yeah, maybe he's lying to me and hiding stuff or doesn't know he's hiding. Like maybe that's all true too, but I definitely know I'm doing some stuff over here. <laughs> um, because yeah, I just, I'm not, I don't want to go to this extreme. I don't want to sound like I think he's like cheating on you or something. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't, I just, I just know that what you feel in your body is true. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that is also a complexity that we have to hold is like, what is it like to know it's true and not add the additional dot, 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 you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, Because I think what's the most important about it is just not this pattern of you like talking yourself out of it or being like, I'm just having a trauma response or I'm just this, like, that's another and that Mm -hmm. has to happen. It's Mm -hmm. like, and I, this is something that I see that we do a lot. It's like, because I'm in victim or my victims triggered, I can't trust what I'm experiencing or feeling. Mm-hmm. It's not that it's just an opportunity to choose the vibrational frequency with which you want to address what's happening in order to create a different possibility. It's just the access to yeah, that. Like even that it's, I'm, I don't like, I'm not even tracking that one in these moments. And what I'm doing is telling him stuff and being like, I'm scared of this. I'm scared of this. When you said this, I got scared of this. And I'm just <laughs> reporting on being like, but, you know, well, you, said so, you think you're going to lose him. Is that just a programming thing or is there actual evidence to suggest it's too much for him? No. I mean, we had a conversation today because there was like a few things this week. And basically he's kind of in a bad space this week because he's really stressed about some stuff. And um, we had like our, not like our first fight, but our first like really tense exchange yesterday. And today I wanted to process it. And I was just I mean, this is like the, I've done this several times, come to him just blubbering of like, what I'm scared about very young, just total. I just want, can I just say for the listeners, this mm-hmm. is how I am. Well, this is, <laughs> let me say what I experienced myself. I remember, um, like at different stages in my relationship with him. And this was all, this was the case. And it was so frustrating because mm-hmm. yeah, it was out of my control. And I started to mm-hmm. see like, okay, I was, that was like two years old, four years old. And I would like almost like see it would keep happening, but the age range or what I could access within the container would change based, you know, over time based on my own growth. Yeah. Like I'm not like, let me attune the vibration here. I can't even, I'm not even using like good language about what's happening. I'm like blubbering. I'm just a crying child. (laughs) When, when we, Tr- uh, like are truly available to intimacy, which I think something about this relationship made you open in a way that you haven't been in the past. This is the unravel of intimacy. Like it's designed this way. Mm-hmm. 
And this is how we kind of figure out what container we want to have that experience in. Yeah. Like I'm not in the develop the container moment. I'm in the, what the fuck? I'm just trying to get through this moment. And I just keep telling him what's happening for me. And so far he's done great. And even today, I'm just like, he, he was frustrated today. He did. He hit a little bit of a limit of just like, I think he feels unseen because he's trying to show up really well. And I'm still over here blubbering and super scared all the time. And so I think he, yeah, I think he was just a little triggered too. Um, but I, even then I was just like, he's like, maybe this is like a growing pain. And he's like, you, you know, whatever. I'm just, I, but I was like, this, this is- let me just say this just because this is what I need to say to my inner mm-hmm. self that you are representing right now. Mm-hmm. They could do so much better. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, seriously, like mm-hmm. seriously, like. Now, like, do I generally have compassion for masculine bodied men? Yes, because who showed you any better than that? So is Mm -hmm. he, is he probably maxing out what he ever saw with you because he likes you a lot and wants to show up? Yes. And we like, and then also comparatively what we hold in comparison to them Mm -hmm. and the complexity we hold. And if he, if he, you're bringing like 1%. He could bring you 99% and you'd still be holding that mm-hmm. space and you might get a little bit off. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, no, I just, what do you mean by that? Like, like I, I'm over here, like understanding where he's coming from more than I'm like, more than he's understanding where I'm coming from. Mm, I guess, but I'm not really using that. I'm, I'm saying like in terms of your capacity to hold space because of yeah. your, yeah. who you are in the world, yeah. plus being a woman who's raised her own kids, who's been through da, 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 X, Y, Z. This is what I mean about centering male comfort. They yeah. have been raised in a way that 1% of stress, 5% of stress throws them out the fucking window. That is like, and we are dealing with 99% of stress. Like, that's a little bit of what went on this week because he actually has really good boundaries. And he, oh, you're frozen for me when oh, I got. Hang on. Oh, you were just frozen. I didn't get any of that. I was like, so, like but this what you were like, but he did a really, and I do this. So I'm talking <laughs> to myself. He did a really great job showing up for me when I shed that one tear. <laughs> like, and he was really overwhelmed because like two things were happening in his life. Mm-hmm. I knew. Fuck, fuck off. That's what fuck. You know what I mean? Step the fuck up. That's what is over here mm-hmm. right now. Step the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Do you see what kind of fucking brilliance you get to be in relationship with? And mm-hmm. you're fucking stressed out because she's having a fucking moment. Fuck you. Mm. And I just, I guess I would like to hear a little more balance mm-hmm. in your system. There's just a little, it's like, it's, it's bare. Well, this like, it's, it's about 2% over accommodating him versus, you know what I mean? It's just a little well, 2% over. Especially because I'm, I'm like, here Ooh. processing it with you. I'm like, what the fuck was that? In those moments, like he said, he made a joke and I was like, no, don't talk to me that way. Like I'm like a kid having a temper tantrum and I'm getting like super specific about what is not okay about what's happening. And that is super fucking uncomfortable for me because I'm so used to accommodating and like considering and making space for and holding. And so, yes, when I'm thinking about it or texting you later or processing it here on this podcast, when I'm not seven, yeah, I've got a bunch of excuses and justifications and stuff. And I'm just like, in those moments, I'm, I'm kind of modeling him because as soon as something like he says it immediately, he doesn't hold it in like a super heavy way, but he's just like, I for, like little stuff or whatever. He'll just be like, no. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you can just be like, no, and not store it up and not over function over to be like, well, what's good for that person? Cause that's what I'm, that's how I was built. And you know, mm-hmm. so I actually, it's like, I just, you don't seem like you're struggling. In this moment, no. What does it look like for you to struggle? What I'm doing on these phone calls with him, <laughs> WhatsApp videos. Well, is that struggling like, though? Or are you just no, showing up authentically? It is. No, there is an authentic way, but it's just not. 
Um, I'm not like holding for myself at the same time. I'm literally just existing in whatever reaction's happening. Like I'm my witness isn't on right. Mine. And I'm just saying that then you're telling yourself a story that without the witness, that's a problem. And that yeah, well, means something's out of control or unsafe or like, yeah, yeah what are you telling yourself without a witness? Mm-hmm. What does that mean? I'm not in control. Well, also like, I'm not going to get all my learnings. I'm not really going to get my healing. I might just be doing a bunch of drama and might not even go anywhere. It's like this very achievement, high-minded oriented thing of like, Mm -hmm. because, and you know, one of the things is he doesn't have all these tools. He's never really been in therapy. Like he's not meeting me in like a get on the triangle. (laughs) Like we're not doing that at all. And I can kind of see how that's good. Cause I'm not even available for that in these conversations. I'm not doing my work. I am just fucking reacting, existing, saying whatever's happening, crying, being upset. To me, that's even more doing your work because when we're in the triangle, we're trying to activate the memory. That's the whole point of the triangle is try to get, you're just in it's the and memory. And getting the witness online. Yeah, I'm literally but You're in literally it. in the memory. Yeah. And you are witnessing it because you can talk about it now. Mm. Yeah. So it's like, I just help me understand. I guess I'm used to like, I guess I'm pretty used to, I mean, and this is also (laughs) control shit codependency, like with witnessing myself and watching myself in a way to control myself versus just watching what's happening and not having a big problem with it. So, (laughs) so now I'm, you know, I'm not stopping. I'm not trying to, well, I don't even know if I'm trying to do anything. I was going to say, I'm not trying to control myself. I don't even know. I'm literally just like in a, like a pure experience where I'm just kind of losing my shit. I just stop saying you're losing your shit. You're not <laughs> losing your shit. Well, I, just by comparison to what my experience has been, it's just like the mind's yeah, just comparing it. And that's, that's what it feels Out like. of control. Yeah. I feel because you can't control the outcome because when because you can, I, yeah, because when you can observe everything, you could manipulate the situation yeah. that even if you felt that way, you would, could cater to what's going to create the outcome with him that you want. And yes. you don't have control of that. Yeah. And that means that you're really being in a relationship because otherwise you're just manipulating relationships. Yeah. Well, I- this like, you know, I definitely was doing that a lot with co-pilot and in my marriage. And so it's like, I, you always have power in your relationships. You always have a one up. Yeah. You make sure of it unconsciously. It's not like, well, it's like, you know, I'm used to talking about more like anxious attachment, which is like, I like codependency. Like I want to manipulate this. I want to show up in the way that I need to show up so that I can maintain this connection that I want to have and that it can go Mm -hmm. the way I want it to go. And something feels a little different about that. It's more like, cause I don't know. Like if we break up, break up. Like I don't feel like this crushing fear of that. It's just the fear of giving up all that control and fe- and just not even knowing what's going to happen next and not having all this structure and strategy about it. Like I'm just right. like, what's it happening? feels like, yeah, it feels like that there's like, um, it's like we create these nets of consciousness to, uh, to see our reality and it feels like it's fracturing and you don't know how you're going to see or feel about reality if that fully fractures yeah like if i was doing this in all my relationships or at my job or with my kids oh, oh I would, no yeah i would be well let me tell you what happens i'll tell you <laughs> i'll tell you what it's like when you do it in all areas of your life <laughs> That's the sassiest everything, water sip I've ever seen. Everything crumbles. Yeah. And so it makes sense that your nervous system would be scared about that. Yeah. Because then it has to rebuild a new life. Mm. And that's not fun. Yeah. So, you know, I'm saying whatever I said. I forget the words I said that you were like, why are you saying that? That's Those are your words for like, it's not fun mm. and it crumbles. Yeah. That's it. Feel It's just ungrounded. Oh, so I guess what would feel more true to me. I mean, just not that it matters what I think, but in my system, I'm like, oh, she's, her reality is coming crashing down. 
and she's yeah. freaking out. And like she can, yes. it's like you're seeing, it's like <laughs> the sky is falling in this one area and your system's already like, is it going to fall in all the areas? Mm-hmm. Is this about to, and it's like preparing for the crumble. Yeah. I think it is, Bethany. Mm. I don't know. I, it doesn't seem like other people create it as dramatic as I did. It seems like maybe oh, they. Oh, I got a knack for create it kind of slow i'm like i'm like looking at other people like oh you just get it so easy don't you (laughs) i hope i could do it in a friendly way but but like i'm like one phone call away from just quitting some jobs my friends like it's it's in these other little places too some of my close friendships i'm like i don't have i I just don't have access for holding space for your stuff the way that you're used to. And so I'm not. And then I look triggered and messy and I cry. And everyone thinks that I'm just like, the feedback is you're not practicing. You're not doing right. conscious. And I'm like, I don't you have what the capacity you give, for what it. You used to give people. That's the reflection. Yeah, I, just don't the have the, I just don't have the capacity. You're not for doing your it. work. Do yeah. your work. Mm. Fuck that. I'm going to say that to me. Somebody say that to me. I really <laughs> wish you would. I've done my fucking work. Hmm. Anyways, um, <laughs> something that you said, and I'm just oh. going. Sorry, this is all I got now. Well, what on um, as someone who's I think maybe I'm not on the other side of like I think I'm on the other side of the crumble. I'm not on the other side of the rebuild. Uh huh. I would say that whoever is left when everything crumbles, mm-hmm. you can trust that. Hmm. Because there's stuff that's real and there's stuff that's not real. And that has to get sorted. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I still have this like active thing. Like when you say the sky is like the sky is falling and things are crumbling. When I look at the societal structures right now, that's mostly what I feel. Just like. I'm gonna have to defend myself in this house. Like we're gonna have to like board up the windows. And I'm like, gonna have some of that too. I have that go like that actually is all, I mean, that's that's type A personality. Like that's always been there. Um, but it's like, oh boy, reality is like reflecting back it in an actual little more intense way than like actually everything's fine. And I'm thinking about that kind of thing. Um, I mean, I was never totally fine, but you know what I'm talking about. Like, there's just a lot of like big structural things that seem to want to like die and rebuild at the same time, sort of in the collective. So it's like the sky's falling in my little brain and my little body and the sky looks like it's starting to fall out there too. And uh, yeah, it's like pretty easy to overwhelm myself with it. And then I just do my little feeling my feelings or not, or just zone out or, be in my house. Those are the things that I'm doing. <laughs> but I think yeah. that if he lived, if y'all like lived in the same place and had like a normal situation, yeah, this wouldn't be happening. It wouldn't. I think mm-hmm. that the orchestration of the long distance is in service of me, the lessons crumbling. Yeah. <laughs> well, probably yeah. for both of you, it, you know, it, it's just enough. Um, and not too much at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now we're going to have this nice little reprieve. Like we've pretty much seen each other every single week. The only week we didn't see each other, he was at the airport for seven hours trying to get here and his flight got canceled. So I'm not going to see him this week. I'm not going to see him next week. We're going to be gone. I'm going to be busy. And I think it's probably good. I think just a little cool down. I can't think of a better person to be with. <laughs> Than you and, and Kara and Reese and the kids and stuff. Like, I think it's going to be, and Tim LaSalle, Tim LaSalle is going to be there, Tim, the Oak tree. And, um, oh, he is. yeah. And so, um, yeah, it, it feels like time for my eight-year-old to go to summer camp. That's what it feels <laughs> like. And I'm like, kind of like, mm-hmm. okay, good. Let me go to summer camp and then I'll deal with this stuff when I get back. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So that's what's happening. Yeah. I wonder what, what, 
well, may- maybe this will just happen in some other way. Cause it's not just happening with the guy I'm dating. It's happened a little bit with some of my close friends. So maybe this will all be showing up while we are in Hawaii for 10 days. And then you'll get to see me non-conscious functioning, not adaptive child, just in what I'm calling losing my shit, but uh, maybe you'll get, maybe I'll, maybe you'll see that there. Yeah. I've gotten ins- explicit instructions for my guidance, not to intervene in this relationship. Interesting. Like even today, I was like, I guess I got permission to say something today, but hmm. it's like, I'm supposed to have distance from it. That's what I'm hmm. clear about. And, hmm. um, well, I was, I didn't mean like with the relationship. I just mean like, like maybe I'll, maybe my stuff will be coming up about other stuff, whatever we're all doing next week. But yeah, I'm just telling you this, that okay, I cool. haven't, I've been like, like, you remember I was like, I have down. some, it, like the energy was like, you know, and I'm like, what does that mean? What is that? And like, uh-huh. I'm learning, oh, like, oh, you need to stay out of this. You need to. Cause I'm just going to go over here and do my thing or and do, do what I'm doing kind of. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to add meaning to it. I'm just trying to, I'm really, really understanding the more that my, I get an integrity with myself Mm. because that's what happens. The, the, the shattering is because our bodies and our nervous system were designed to, to develop in a really magical way that we have the word that's coming up is invaded, but, um, gotten in the way of, with the trauma and, and the things and not getting our needs met and all of these things. So mm-hmm. instead of the, the design of the nervous system, like replicating what it was created to do, it starts to, it, it's created in a shattered way, in a split way. Um, and that, and then that builds our reality. And well, so try, then- try this on, try like this description is like, cause this is how I talk to clients about it. Like SC clients. Um, we have all these short-term strategies that are really friendly. Being able to like sanction something off in your subconscious when it's too much for you to deal with it in a given moment, um, that's for us. Like it's helping us survive the moment, but all of the conditions for then processing that and facing it and feeling it and having the safety to do that aren't consistently being met anymore because we've socialized ourselves out of creating the conditions for healing, which includes Mm -hmm. safety. And so then it just goes on forever. (laughs) And then we just hand it down generationally. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't disagree with you, but it's also like, it's just so much more complex than that. And and Mm -hmm. I think that it's a little bit too much to put on someone like that. They're creating that. It's like, we, we are like, we are co-committed to that as an entire human race. And yeah. it is a part of where we are in our evolution. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, if you were born in 1982, really good chance your nervous yeah. system was going to like have some of this, right? Yeah. If you were born in 1964, even more severe, if you mm-hmm. were born, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just, it's, it's the evolution of humanity within the earth and the impact on that, on the developing nervous system. Mm -hmm. and so what I'm just saying is like it's almost like the earth wants us to know I designed these things to be as beautiful and amazing and as aligned to life consciousness and love as these beautiful oak trees that you see but y'all you know we as you were learning and I don't think she's like judging but I think she's like you know y'all did some things and you kind of went off on your own and you wanted to, you wanted to see what it was out like without mommy. And, you know, these are some of the consequences that your nervous system's not in right relationship with life. And that life, like in right relationship with life, love is our baseline as a nervous system. Mm-hmm. And so all I'm saying is that this shattering that's happening It's actually to make way for your nervous system to see what it would have been and and regenerate itself Mm. from its original design, which is aligned to life and love consciousness. Mm. But we have to be willing to shatter 
you know, and face, and that's happening individually in you, but it, you're just a representation of what's happening in the collective. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, it's a lot scarier when it's like, you know, a public shooting, you know, in the neighborhood next to us mm-hmm. versus like, you know, in, in your relationship, but ultimately what's available on the other side, if you let it shatter is the regeneration of the nervous system aligned to life consciousness. I think a lot about how the conditions for healing are, are not in isolation. Like it's being with somebody that can say the things that you were saying, like, uh, like if you were my parent who said the thing I needed to hear when I was a kid or whatever, or, um, as a SE practitioner, like, how, the way I'm holding space for a clan or whatever, or how we hold space for each other in relationship, or at least we try to, but it's like, it is, you can't, I don't think you can just go figure it out. <laughs> I think it's done relationally for whatever reason. It seems to be by design. Mm-hmm. It's designed. Mm-hmm. And there are relationships that are real and there are relationships that are constructed as a part of this illusion that we've had to create in order to survive. Well, I guess in one sense, all of the relationships are constructed and everything is too. Um, it doesn't feel that way to me. I don't know. I'm still testing this, but I, it mm-hmm. feels to me that when our soul comes here, it comes in a network of souls. Mm-hmm. And part of the design was that you would recognize each other pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. But because of all the trauma and everything, there, there's a lot of disconnection, a lot of confusion. And so, like, let's say you're programmed to find this person, like you literally have the map and like reminders and mm-hmm. key points or whatever. Um, but it's I, I see it's like a map and then it's like covered with sludge mm-hmm. and you can only like remember they have brown hair or something, you know? Yeah. So then you just date people with brown hair or you date five guys named Brandon (laughs) because you're trying to like work through the muck that's covering the, the guidance system that you came with. So do you think synchronicities are a part of the guidance system? I think that everything, when the guidance system's in alignment, it's, it's synchronicitous because it's showing you the path. Like that's Mm -hmm. the design of it, but we're so blocked from our design that we're like, oh, a synchronicity. <laughs> Look at that. And it's like, no, that's like the whole game. Mm-hmm. Like that's, yeah. it's supposed to be like that all the time, all the time, because that's how, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, I have never been like a mm-hmm. super synchronicity person, mm-hmm. um, but that's happening a ton. Like what? So he likes to ask questions. He likes to ask like funny little pondering questions. Mm -hmm. So he'll just be like, what movie, what movie character do you identify with the most? Like just, he's just always chit-chatting these random little questions like this. And so I said, whatever I said. And then I was like, what about you? And he's like, this is on a Tuesday. He's like Peter Venkman from Ghostbusters. Um, And, you know, explained to me why he, that is who he identifies with or whatever. And then he put a song on the radio, uh, like he was DJing and he put that song. It's a Daft Punk song, Instant Crush. And he was hilariously singing. They sing really fast and really high. And he was trying to hit the high notes and he kept replaying it. And I was having a fun time laughing about it and stuff. So then he flies home. And the next day I'm driving to go get dinner with Paul and Mario. And I turn the song on to be cute, to be like reminding myself of how silly and fun that was. And I don't really know the song. And I was like, oh, I'm going to learn that song. Turn on instant crush. I'm driving downtown Salem, Massachusetts. The Ghostbusters car drove past me. Like that's Peter Bankman as Ghostbusters. That's the character in Ghostbusters, Mm -hmm. Bill Murray's character. Like I've never seen a bat or a Ghostbusters mobile in my life. But the day after he went on this tangent and played that song, then I I turned the song on and then the Ghostbusters, I have a video of the Ghostbusters thing going by me. 
just stuff like that. Like, st- like something like that happens like once a week that feels so weird. So hot, like so random. Um, I, and whenever I, you know, I'll point them out to him or something, I sent him that and he was like, no shit. And, um, he says, what do you make of that? And I, I just keep calling it the universe winking. So a little like stuff like that. I keep having universe winking moments. Hmm. That oh, seem a little, a little clear. I forgot <laughs> to tell you, guess who called me yesterday, two days ago. I don't know if I can, um, reveal the whole people's thing. names. Start with an L. Uh, oh, that was my next guess. <laughs> no way. Mm-hmm. How was that? It brought up a lot. Um, the main thing was, you know, the core is I always knew there would be a time that he would reach out and I would be available to help him Mm -hmm. in the way that he's helped me. And there, you know, if I, if I'm honest, like, okay, the few things that I am aware of now, and this feels like a pretty new awareness to have it at this level. It's like the only I've like experienced like innocent love of my innocence twice really Mm -hmm. and it's like him and then my boyfriend in high school Bobby Mm -hmm. and with him there was a texture of soul connection right that I couldn't understand at the time and I took very much for granted because I thought I will have this over and over again and it was it was not the case I I did not have it again until you know what I thought I experienced with him and um that's interesting language (laughs) yeah and um so just and then how there were there so there's like all these things that got activated really quickly when he called me it was like it's like I could access those parts Mm -hmm. in a way that I don't even think I had access to the time that it truly happened you know I could feel I don't know. I just connected to a more innocent version of me and I could feel the terror of being loved that way again. Mm. Um, and how maybe at the time I'm sure that it, it was so scary for my system Mm -hmm. and it didn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. That's something that you know, even Heyman said to me before, it's like, I don't deserve this. I don't understand. You know, I can even feel sometimes that his system is just like, you are, that's way too much, like stop. And it, it almost registers in the system as bad, as a danger, you know, as a threat. Um, and the other thing is that with Dougie, he was like, so, you know, there's a lot of like kind of karma, like you know, whenever I was always just chasing the next guy, like looking for the soulmate. And it's like, he was, uh, he was one. Soulmate. <laughs> yeah. And then when he, um, and then when those would come crumbling down, I would call him and he would express, you know, how hard that was for him and how hurt he would be. And he, he did set a lot of boundaries and he, he put up a lot of walls over his heart around mm-hmm. me. And Also, our lives just never synced up. Like I would call and he just got married or, you know what I mean? It would just be like these. So it was definitely this part of me like, you know, is it, Mm -hmm. is it time, you know? But when I really felt into it, I'm like, no, I don't think he's on my path. And I'm, I'm really, really focused. I feel really like my higher self is in the throne room of this system now. And that even though, you know, it's not what's always in control, it's like my practice right now is to bow to my own sovereignty, to surrender to my higher self, to like, I trust her Mm -hmm. and her guidance. I see how she's pulling me. I see how the guidance is illogical and I don't know, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and she, she, you know, basically was like, you trust yourself. Like, you know, I don't, it's not for you to do this. And it would, it would harm, it would be a harm for me 
to inject that into like, you can tell at least in our relationship, he's come full circle to where he trusts me to help him. So if I were to inject anything like that, and I don't even feel that I'm, you know, I'm not saying I'm even interested in that, but you know, I can see how it would like taint the situation. But if I was in kind of a trauma, you know, if I felt incomplete in my system, I, I could make it about me is basically, I could make this about me and it's not, it's about him and it's about his journey and his path and how. Um, so. I think I mostly understand what you're saying, but without the content, I'm like a tiny bit. Like, like um, myself, but okay, what is the more content I can share? Like, like what I, is he's the basically, help? basically what I'm saying is, the old me, if he had called me and been mm-hmm. like, I want some feedback about this situation. And it's, it's kind of like he's in a relationship that he really cares about the person, but he's never been alone. He's been married and divorced and had, you know, he's just never, ever honored himself and like taken any space to himself, you know, mm-hmm. always been in a relationship. So he's going through this like pull mm-hmm. and it's not the first time he's expressed this to me in the time that we've known each other. And um, like I can feel, I know, and have seen ever since they got together, I'm like, she loves him and it's so clean and like, she's healed him. And like, it just, it just feels like that they have this journey that they've signed up to do together. The old me would have been like, but I don't have anyone right now. And mm, I will you know what I'm saying? Like, or like, why don't I just, see because I would be making it about me and my needs Mm -hmm. the person I am now most of the time it seems like I'm at a level of observation to be like what does the universe really want in this situation and and there's so many times that I see I think that this has been my initiation around sex and love has been that way because it it does help me to not get as confused when my lessons arrive that like mm-hmm. with like this, how I'm supposed to show up with that lesson mm-hmm. by just like, you know what I mean? I think so many of us, we experience those attractions and those connections in ways that we're like, we immediately want to fuck the person, you know, or we, we just create things that aren't clean around it because we're not clean in our nervous system. Mm-hmm. And so I just feel like I'm in right relationship mm-hmm. with him. And this is like a completion for me. And I I feel honored to be able to support him from a clean place that doesn't make it about me because I made it about me for so long. Yeah. That's what I'm doing right now. Making it about me. Every single thing he does, it's about me. And I have a huge experience around it. And then I just be in that fully. That's what's going on over here, (laughs) Mm -hmm. which is different. And it has to, yeah, it has to be that way. If you haven't I mean, I remember when I met Hitman, it was like, I, I knew I'm like, I've done this before. And I, the message I got is like, I must have to go through it and experience it. And that's what I think is the, the illusion tells us that we can control for this shit. And mm-hmm. if we get smart enough around it, we won't create the same pattern, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I'm not I, f- believe I that. feel dumb right now. If you are, on, I believe that that is the, if you want to be frozen in time and not evolve, Mm. choose that Mm. if you want to evolve it is a somatic experiential journey and you don't get to skip any of the lessons yeah it's not even like a want to evolve for me yet like that where i'm at your system you by nature of being on planet earth you are evolving that's the other thing that's the other illusion that you tell yourself Mm. that you're doing your work Mm-hmm. That you're evol- your shit is evolving, period, point blank, period. The most ignorant ass person out here is fucking evolving every day. Their cells are evolving, their skin mm-hmm. is shedding. You know, mm-hmm. you know, it's a different there, everyone's experiencing it differently, but girl, you're evolving. Yeah, I mean, in the framework that I've been thinking about it and like framing it up the last bit of time here. I don't know, like you feel more congruent to me than I remember. I have remembered like you Mm -hmm. feel settled, you feel, um, yeah, the congruent is really big. You just feel like there's less, I'm just not having that feeling of like unsettled or something. 
But normally I'm like, something, no, something's not right here. Something is missing. That's the feeling. So well, I've missing. really resisted a lot of my reactivity. <laughs> um, you and, and then my story that I like to tell myself, I, I've told myself I'm going to stop saying my story because I had an experience the other day with a person from CLG and it was a very respectful experience, but I was sharing my, you know, and she was like, that's a story. And I'm like, everything is a story. <laughs> yeah. everything. Like that's all we're doing here. So I want to be in a relationship with you. So I was trying to help you understand my experience of reality. Mm-hmm. So anyway, side bar. So I want to be Got careful it. about that language because it's like, it's all a story. Um, like you feel like it's a gaslighting kind of thing. Yeah. It's like, fuck you like your shit is a story too your story that i'm telling a story is a story like how, <laughs> how far you want to go with this i think that if you're suffering you have to remember that it's just a story and that you can tell other stories and that's mm-hmm. that's the tool mm-hmm. but then it gets like weaponized like oh that's your that's a story it's like this is the reality that i swim in do you want to know what it is so we can find one that we can swim in together yeah also there's like very very little little facts <laughs> and it's like our right. stories are very valuable <laughs> it's like right. hey that's what, what makes like, us it's, we are. it's like super fun actually that's like the <laughs> yeah. whole reason we come here to see how yeah. complex the story can line can get mm-hmm. um anyway i lost my whole train of thought <laughs> you were telling me uh i said i just don't let all my reactivity be there like i resist my reactivity and then you said you were talking to someone the other day mm-hmm Maybe you were just like, oh, I'm, I have a story about something about resisting reactivity. I mean, I get, I kind of get why I did that. It's- oh, I was saying, I remember now. I was saying that like my story is that if if people who are more energetically porous, mm-hmm. which I like, that one of the reasons I have had a disproportionate experience of victimhood in my reality is because you're feeling everybody else's. Yes, because all of the discharged, and I think this happens in families. I think it happens in on teams and groups and organizations. I think it happens in the collective, and that's what creates margins and people who are marginalized. Mm-hmm. It's like the more we marginalize in our own system, the more that it ha- that energy has to go somewhere. Like you have two really emotional kids. We've talked about this. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know maybe pretty reactive, we might say, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like somewhere that energy has to go. And that when we wake up to, it's just like, and like what I'm finding right now is I'm, there's like more and more rage coming online. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I want to, in my relational containers where I'm like, you need to hold some of this, all yeah. this stuff I've been holding over here, you can have it. You can have some back. We need to balance this shit out. Mm -hmm. If you're actually quote unquote committed to me, like you say, which we'll find out, won't we? Because if I show all my cards, if I, if you see everything that I'm holding over here, that's the test of commitment. Mm -hmm. And that's ultimately what you're going through is like, are but you going to stick you, around if I just you keep being... adding, you keep adding layers, like, and then you also get to decide, like, is this what I want to be committed to? Is this the dance that I want to do? Mm-hmm. And let's add kids to this and let's add like a job to this. And let's add like, that you don't see me when I'm cute. Like, and let's mm-hmm. add maybe like cancer, mm-hmm. you know, is this still, we still want to do this? Yeah. I don't know. You know, I don't know. And, and that's, and, and most, I think, I think the kind of the exploration of humanity right now is we've learned to play a really good story line of family and relationships, and we can't play that storyline anymore. And so now we're really having to see like, okay, how do I hold myself, hold other people? Like, how do I exist in all this complexity? Well, I definitely will say as I've been more 
seven and eight years old. <laughs> um, me and the kids are like dialed in, like um, low, no conflict drama. Like they're available. I'm available even just at night, like the stuff we talk about and like we have our little bedtime rituals and routines and stuff. And that's one place that actually feels, yeah, I don't have any real concerns, I guess. Um, yeah. So becoming seven has been good for my relationship with my seven-year-old. <laughs> yeah, and that's been my experience with my 15-year-old. Mm. yeah and even like uh you know parker has been very resistant to like mm, i don't know energy and this like any any of the woo he's just like mm. he's been just very like literal and lately he's just like um like at night he's just like let's create an energy bubble to protect the bed for the night I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I don't even know what we're doing. I'm like, great, let's do it. Bring it up. Let's bring an energy bubble online. And they're just like, last night they were like, we were talking about my dad, who, you know, his past, obviously. And I was like, yeah, I mean, I feel more connected to him now a lot of times than I did when he was alive or in the years after he died. And Finn's like, he's in the room. He's over there. And like, they're just playing with just sensing and feeling, describing to me what they're yeah. sensing. And it's different. They have these different experiences of stuff. And, um, you know, now Parker's like, like I have two energy future doctors, um, that I work with, with the kids and, um, and myself, and he's just like, you know, he'll have a runny nose or he'll be scared of the dark. And he's like, can you, uh, can you text Pamela? Cause, uh, like, which six months ago he was like mm -mm, no like this is not real I don't buy any of this stuff and he's just mm -hmm. kind of trying stuff out and he's well, that's the beauty of when everything's a story the mm -hmm. same story that I told myself about medical doctors and the and medical solutions mm -hmm. and biology I can tell myself the exact same story that I'm gonna heal from an energy healer and either way yeah it's gonna work well and it's just like who, who cares who even cares if it's real? Like, it's just like, well, if it worked, it does matter kind of too. Well, I think it matters to some extent. His like experience. If it so he's scared of the dark at night. And then we do whatever stuff we do. Like I've been saying, uh, this is actually a Marla thing. I was like, give me your worries. So what are we worried about? Like we do a little round Robin about the things we're scared about at night. And if they're scared about something, I go, okay, give it to me. And it used to be like just a verbal, like, okay, I'll hold that for you. But now he puts his hands on me and he literally is like transferring the fear over to my body because Marla wants him to know how to give it away. Like they'll give it to me for now. And then they'll just know how to like let go of stuff and release stuff eventually. And like, he's in, it works. Like when he has a tummy ache, he has me come over and I put my hand on his tummy. He's like, okay, I feel better. Do I really know what I'm doing with energy work? No. Sometimes some weird stuff's happened that's been cool on on a rare occasion, but um, I don't. It doesn't matter if it's helping him. I'm like, great. And who knows what? Who even knows about it? If like how? But real? some people like this is where we are in reality. People will fight and kill other people over proving mm -hmm. that their reality is real. Right. And it's like, yeah, I had someone you be like, came here and got the virtual goggles and you got to create mm -hmm. that. And I want to create this over here. Yeah. I'm like, like any other story I have about anything that how I'm going to show up to settle my kid. Like there's a million strategies we have. Like let's pick some empowering ones that work that we feel connected around. This can ultimately align to our values and align to you know, the highest expression of who we are, which mm -hmm. is different there. I think there are elements that are similar for all of us that we share. And that's the place of interdependence that we have to find mm -hmm. is like, what is it? You know, like you love your kids and you want your kids to feel safe. Mm -hmm. So does a, a supporter of gun control yeah. who has 25 guns in their house. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, there's a really similar consciousness and you mm -hmm. just want the freedom to do it without guns and to know that guns will not be a part of their reality 
and they want a freedom to know that they will have guns to protect you know what I mean? It's really I kind of like, want guns now, too, though. I'm like right, well, ready to board up the windows and get some guns. Right. But I mean, I, that's the invitation that's happening because people who ne- who would be anti-violence are now mm-hmm. like, well, they're that starting to. Real. Right. And those pe- like we're all going to have to create compromises and understand like it's just going to get I don't want to say worse. I don't like that word, but it's going to keep getting more complex where you can't find the um black and white anymore Mm -hmm. like it's gonna get hard to be like how am i different why would i fight you Mm -hmm. this or it's gonna get more extreme right because that's the only way that that can be protected you know is to not face and sometimes that pendulation has to go all the way before it comes back and Almost always, unfortunately. Yeah. So, you know. I'm about to read, ready to go do weird shit in the bedroom with my kids. Go do and- weird shit. <laughs> um, and, uh, yep. Yeah. I'll just keep letting things crumble. I'm getting really scared and emotional. And talking about it. That's my homework, I guess. We'll see how that goes. I'm learning a lot from, and you know, obviously in some places it's way more uncomfortable than with you, but I'm learning a lot from seeing who people choose and how they choose to learn their lessons and who they choose to do it with and what the universe brings for that. Mm. You know, it's really interesting to watch are you like surrendered to it or what like what is your thing what do you mean surrendered to it well you're like i could read that as uh i really trust that you chose this person for these lessons right now or this experience or i could read it as like oh. i'm learning a lot about how <laughs> like how i think things should go and that people I mean, are going to well, do there's it the way definitely, they think they should do it no something. no there's definitely an initiation for me around like letting go of my attachment to how someone should learn it so the complexity for me is mm-hmm. like could my intuition be trustworthy around it and mm-hmm. could it also be like the perfect thing that mm-hmm. has you know what i mean like could all of it be true like i'm I'm testing that. Could I even get to the place of being like happy? I mean, because obviously with Heyman, it's way different than you. It's like, could I actually be, could I actually want this for him in some Mm -hmm. way? You know, so it's like you can feel yourself wanting it for me in some way now that you've like heard some more color and stuff. And you're like, oh, I think this is. Well, I just feel more neutral to you. I mean, I don't, Uh I don't experience this as any different. Like to me, I had kind of the same energy with Dougie. I just met Dougie and I, liked him you know (laughs) it's like I just this person I just there's more resistance to like getting to know or like investing in Mm -hmm. um I had this same thing with Reese in the beginning all of the no let's say that (laughs) it's okay (laughs) (laughs) but like all of these things like you know what I mean like it's not different how I felt about it it's just different how I'm being with it and like what I'm learning Mm -hmm. about that feeling and like maybe what I made that feeling mean before. And then like, Uh and it's like, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that I I hate feeling it. I hate, there's a lot of resistance, but it's like, okay, how is this for me too? You know, Mm -hmm. like, was I really, should I really have been doing like, ultimately it's created a level of distance in my relationship with him that I wasn't willing to create for myself. Mm -hmm. And that's serving me. Mm-hmm. in my own growth and helping me see things in a way that I was too close to see. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, but then when I get into like, you know, the stories of like, well, he loves her more than me or he, you know, this or that, that's when it hurts me, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm pretty committed as much as I can influence it in my system to not create more of that harm to myself 
around it. And that's, what's different with you. It's like, it's not going to harm me, whatever, whatever happens with you is not necessarily going to harm me unless I mm-hmm. like just get mad. I want to be disaster or something, or something. <laughs> but like this one, you know, this, in this other situation, it's closer to my own yeah. heart and innocence mm-hmm. and, and make it mean things about me. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And I could feel when this person that I told you reached out to me, it's like, I could feel in a way that probably no one else in his life will ever be able to feel because of what I've been through. I'm like, this girl loves him so much and she almost loves him too much. And him going and finding space is going to break her and unravel her in the, all the ways that she needs to for her own freedom. And like, I hate even saying that out loud. I hate that that's what's true. I hate that that's what's been true for me. Mm. And I can feel that if they re configure on on where he's more in right relationship what's available is exponential to them than what's Mm -hmm. available now Mm -hmm. you know and it takes a lot of love and deep commitment to make it through someone's evolution it is and and it's not for the faint of heart and i don't right now i don't see evidence that there's a lot of examples of people who do it and can do it without holding like deep resentment, closing themselves off. You know what I mean? Just being totally wrecked, like Mm -hmm. to do it and to be able to like experience yourself as more and more love with that person and to be in like such a place of freedom that you know, you are love and you know that they invite you to love and whoever and whatever they choose to be doesn't change that. Mm -hmm. Like I'm getting a taste of that. Even with Heyman, there's moments where I'm like, I am fully love. He has been an invitation for me to know myself as love. And from that place, I love all of the pieces of him that I've ever had to experience and nothing he could do could change that. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean you guys are like together. It's not equaling like a life, building a life yeah. together or something. You know, yeah. that's not what's true right now. So mm. I don't know. And in this moment, I feel less attached to having that mm-hmm. with anyone. Um, but I do think my invitation right now is like I recognized in, in this, you know, person showing up in these different things like that I have been available for like divine peace and some other things, but I have not been fully available to receive divine love, you know, care, but the feeling divine love in my body. And, um, and the more that I allow my nervous system to feel that and know that the less that I like need someone to remind me or show me that it's there. We'll see. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? I could be crying on the next episode. We, I think <laughs> our viewers know by now how this works. <laughs> we know how this works, don't we, guys? We know how it works. Thanks for sticking with us. Oh, thanks for, thanks for watching the evolution unfold. Thanks for listening. We welcome your feedback. You can email us at healingcollectivepod at gmail.com. Our website is thehealingcollectivepodcast.com, at Healing Podcast on Twitter, at Healing Collective Podcast on Instagram. Special thanks to Ethan Luck, who produces. You can find him at Ethan Luck on all platforms. <laughs>